speak for members on all sides of the House today in offering to Japanese Canadians the formal and sincere apology. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, once again, on behalf of the people and government of Canada, we offer a full apology to Chinese Canadians for the head tax and express our deepest sorrow for the subsequent exclusion of Chinese immigrants. More than a century ago, a great injustice took place. On May 23rd, 1914, a steamship sailed into Burrard Inlet in Vancouver. Bonjour, mon nom est Tovarwa et bienvenue à la célébration virtuelle du mois du patrimoine asiatique. Je suis présentement au parc Baldwin à Montréal et je tiens donc à souligner que les terres sur lesquelles nous sommes rassemblés aujourd'hui font partie du territoire traditionnel non cédé des Mohawks qui a longtemps servi de lieu de rassemblement et d'échange entre les nations. And I just want to say thank you for having the land acknowledgement. I am Larry Grant from the Musqueam First Nation, and Ayatluk is my Musqueam name. I am of mixed ancestry. My father is from China, from uh, Guangdong Province, Zhongshan County in the village of Simun. And from that, I carry a name, Hung Lai Heng. I'm a descendant of Kriopolano, who was here to greet the first ship to arrive under Captain Narvez, the Spaniard, and the first ship to arrive under Captain George Vancouver, the Englishman. And as our ancestor had done in the past, I do today, and raise my hands and welcome to all of you that are logged on here for this event. I know this is about Asian Heritage Month, and it also affects all of the people that have the same mixed heritage that I have. And it's my pleasure to be able to give the land acknowledgement and a little bit of history. Uh, the Musqueam people have been here for millennia, have long lived here long before colonialism began. And the unceded lands that we speak of are lands that have never been given up, never been sold, never been traded, never been lost. They have been arbitrarily occupied by the Crown of England, the Crown of Canada, the Crown of the province. Growing up with Canada's acts of denial, how it has denied Indigenous identity, Indigenous culture, Indigenous spirituality, ceremony, uh, Indigenous family structure. And living under those conditions as a Musqueam person, and then living in the other realm that we belong to, knowing that Chinese were considered aliens, they were not given citizenship at that time. There was a real racial hierarchy that dominated the society that we were growing up in. So all the acts of denial directed at the Chinese along with the indigenous carry that post-traumatic stress disorder syndrome that we talk about 
when we're concerned about things that are happening un under COVID-19. And today we can see the damage it can do to our societal and mental structures. So that's really, really important to bring that analogy in so that we understand more clearly why Indigenous and Chinese people behave the way they do in Canadian society today. So, hi, Tap Elvis, Tim, Nasia, Colette Quincy, Tia Tala, to swallow a who you know much for E to E to know well, the Hilostala can that. Hi, Tapka, hi, Tapka. Welcome to the virtual celebration of Asian Heritage Month. The theme for this year, 2021, is recognition, resilience, and resolve. These three words embody the myriad of sentiments that Canadians of Asian descent have experienced and honor their many significant contributions and the diverse stories which are rooted in resilience and perseverance. My family came to these lands 48 years ago to seek better opportunities and to prosper, and we have. I cannot imagine my life anywhere else the experiences I've had, the connection to where I am and where I grew up. So while this recording may reach us at different places on the land, I want to express my gratitude for those who have cared for these lands and waterways where I'm situated, a place that has known human activity for over 15,000 years. We acknowledge the ancestral lands of the Dish with One Spoon Territory and more recently Treaty 13. This includes the Mississaugas of the Credit who are part of the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Wendat Nation, also the Haudenosaunee Confederacy of Six Nations, and any other nation recorded or unrecorded. Miigwech, Niawen, thank you. Merci, Paul. Cette année, le thème de reconnaissance, résilience et audace est également un appel à l'action lancé à tous les Canadiens pour les inciter à s'unir dans la lutte contre toute forme de discrimination et de racisme anti-asiatique. Célébrons cette incroyable diversité qui fait notre force. This May, we spoke with many Canadians of Asian descent, community and public leaders from coast to coast to coast, who continue to resolve to stand together against xenophobia, hate fueled by misinformation, and all forms of racism, including anti-Asian racism. And they invite all Canadians to join them. We've also heard compelling stories from Asian communities across Canada and hosted a lively roundtable discussion. Join us as we begin this virtual celebration. To sing the Canadian National Anthem, here is Marie Huey from her home in Vancouver, BC. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all of us command, carton L'honorable Bardis Chager se voit à l'inclusion et au renforcement communautaire. De ses activités d'aide au sport récréatif pour enfants, à ses heures de bénévolat auprès des aînés, elle se consacre à resserrer les liens dans la communauté de Waterloo. Hello, bonjour, Sassuikalji. I want to begin by acknowledging that I'm joining you from Morlo, Ontario, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and Neutral Peoples. Welcome to this year's virtual Asian Heritage Month celebrations. As you know, Asian Heritage Month would not have been possible without the vision of the Honorable Dr. Vivian Poi. 
In 2001, then Senator Poi proposed a motion to designate May as Asian Heritage Month. And in 2002, the government of Canada under Prime Minister Jean Chrétien signed an official declaration to this effect. Depuis en mai de chaque année, nous rendons hommage à la magnifique diversité et aux riches cultures des personnes d'ascendance asiatique au Canada. Nous soulignons leur contribution extraordinaire à l'édification du Canada que nous connaissons aujourd'hui. Et puisqu'ils constituent l'une des populations les plus nombreuses et dont la croissance est la plus rapide, nous savons que les Canadiens d'ascendance asiatique continueront de jouer un rôle important dans l'édification d'un pays encore plus fort et inclusif. As a proud South Asian woman, Asian Heritage Month is special to me. And I may be a bit biased, but I believe Asian cuisine includes some of the most delicious food in the world. Au Canada, la diversité est l'une de nos plus grandes forces. Malheureusement, même si elle contribue énormément à la diversité et à la résilience du Canada, les personnes d'origine asiatique ont toujours été victimes de racisme et de discrimination. In fact, for too many Asian communities, anti-Asian racism is a daily reality. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a rise in anti-Asian acts of racism, discrimination and violence fueled by harmful stigmas and xenophobia. This has to stop. Comme l'a dit le Premier ministre Justin Trudeau, la haine et l'intolérance sont toutes ces formes sont absolument inacceptables au Canada. Ce qui m'amène à vous parler du thème du mois du patrimoine asiatique de cette année. Reconnaissance, résilience et audace. Le thème nous invite à reconnaître les contributions des communautés asiatiques, célébrer leur résilience, faire preuve d'audace pour nous améliorer, nous apposer d'une seule voix à la xénophobie, à la haine et au racisme sous toutes ses formes. For me, this month has been filled with celebrations, important revelations and conversations with many Canadians, including of Asian descent, some whose families have been here for several generations. To all the people who took the time to meet with me, attended our mini forums, invited me to take part in your celebrations, or organized Asian Heritage Month events in your communities. I want to thank you for your vulnerability, resilience, and resolve. Know that your efforts to combat anti-Asian racism are noticed and appreciated. Tonight, as you join us in this celebration, I hope you enjoy the many rich cultures and heritage from our languages and stories to our traditions. And as we wrap up Asian Heritage Month, let's keep working to build a more equitable, more compassionate, and a consciously more inclusive Canada. My best to you and your loved ones. I hope you keep well and safe. Happy Asian Heritage Month. And now I would like to introduce our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. Hello everyone. Bonjour à tous. Each May, we come together to celebrate the contributions that Canadians of Asian descent have made and continue to make to our communities and to our country. From the first Asian-Canadian Governor-General, Adrian Clarkson, to the well-known author, Shiam Salvadure, Asian-Canadians have helped shape the country that we all know and love. This year's theme, Recognition, Resilience and Resolve, highlights the strength and determination of Canadians of Asian descent. And it also invites us all to learn the lessons of our past so we can build a better future. The Komagata Maru, the Chinese head tax, and the Japanese internment of the Second World War are all dark periods in our history. And they serve as a stark reminder of what anti-Asian discrimination can amount to. Unfortunately, in recent years, we've seen a sharp rise in anti-Asian racism across the world, and Canada has not been immune. I want to be clear, though. Attacks against Canadians of Asian descent are attacks against all of us. And this type of hatred and discrimination is unacceptable. On doit tous dénoncer la haine et le racisme en tout temps et en tout lieu. L'année dernière nous a rappelé qu'il nous reste encore du travail à faire pour bâtir un pays plus inclusif. C'est pourquoi notre gouvernement réalise de nouveaux investissements pour aider à combattre le racisme sous toutes ses formes et faire en sorte que chacun se sente en sécurité dans sa communauté. On reste déterminé à bâtir un pays plus équitable et plus juste pour tous. Parce qu'ici au Canada, la diversité fait notre force. So let's continue to learn more about the cultures of our neighbors of Asian descent and let's unite 
to create a Canada free of hatred and discrimination. I hope everyone had a wonderful Asian Heritage Month. Merci. Here are just a few of the countless Canadians of Asian descent who have left their mark. Let's take a moment to recognize their rich contributions, their resilience and commitment to shaping Canada. The Right Honorable Adrian Clarkson, former Governor General of Canada, founded the Institute for Canadian Citizenship with her husband, John Ralston Saul. ICC, as it is known, is an institution that delivers programs and special projects that inspire inclusion, create opportunities to connect, and encourage active citizenship. The Right Honorable Adrian Louise Clarkson is the 26th Governor General of Canada, a former television personality, journalist, novelist, diplomat, and publisher. She was the first racialized person, the first person of Asian descent, and the first without a political or military background appointed to the vice regal position. David Suzuki needs no introduction. Since 1990, the David Suzuki Foundation has worked to conserve and protect the natural environment and help create a sustainable Canada. La vision de la Fondation David Suzuki est que tous ensemble, nous devons agir car nous sommes le monde, la nature. Grâce à cette fondation, de nombreux projets voient le jour au Canada pour transformer l'économie verte, protéger les systèmes naturels, créer des communautés viables, sauvegarder le climat et permettre aux citoyens et aux jeunes en particulier de renouer avec la nature. Ensemble, nous pouvons tous contribuer à sauver notre monde. Patrick Chan est triple médaille olympique et considéré comme le plus grand patineur artistique du Canada depuis qu'il a remporté les championnats du monde pendant trois années consécutives et battu le record du plus grand nombre de titres nationaux canadiens remportés. Il a été nommé lauréat du prestigieux prix Lou Marsh en 2011, remis au meilleur athlète canadien. Il a également remporté en 2007 le prix Jeune Canadien Chinois et a été nommé Personnalité asiatique de l'année dans les arts et les sports en 2008 par le magazine Asia Network. En 1991, l'inspecteur Baltej Singh Dillon est devenu le premier membre de la Gendarmerie royale du Canada à être autorisé à porter un turban. Son combat pour obtenir le droit de porter la barbe et le turban a déclenché un débat national concernant les accommodements religieux au Canada. Baltej Singh Dillon a effectué une longue carrière de près de 30 ans dans la Gendarmerie royale. Il a travaillé comme agent dans un petit détachement de la GRC à Kennel, en Colombie-Britannique, puis comme spécialiste en interrogatoire et examen polygraphique à Surrey. En 2016, il a obtenu le grade d'inspecteur et est devenu responsable du programme Préparation et intervention opérationnelle des forces de l'ordre. Il a été et continue d'être un conférencier motivant qui intervient dans des camps pour enfants, des événements communautaires, des universités et des écoles. Payam Akavan est un avocat de renommée internationale, spécialiste des droits de la personne et un érudit qui s'engage en permanence en faveur de la justice. Il est également agrégé supérieur au Massey College et membre de la Cour permanente d'arbitrage de la Haye. Il a publié de nombreux articles sur le droit pénal international et en 2017, il a participé aux conférences de Massey à la CBC. Le professeur Akavan a été le premier conseiller juridique du procureur du Tribunal pénal international pour l'ex-Yougoslavie et a également travaillé auprès de l'ONU en Bosnie, au Cambodge, au Guatemala, au Rwanda et au Timor-Leste. Nalofer Pazira est une auteure, journaliste et réalisatrice afghane canadienne dont l'œuvre a été primée. Elle partage son temps et son travail entre le Canada et le Moyen-Orient. Elle représente le Canada et l'Afghanistan sur la scène internationale et s'implique dans la communauté afghane à Ottawa et à Toronto. Elle est née en Inde, où son père travaillait en tant que médecin pour l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Sa famille est ensuite retournée à Kaboul, où elle a grandi sous les dix années d'occupation soviétique. Quand elle a eu 16 ans, sa famille s'est enfuie au Pakistan, où ils ont vécu comme réfugiés avant d'immigrer à Moncton, au Nouveau-Brunswick, en 1990. Nalofer Padzira est connu pour ses longs métrages dont Kandahar, Return to Kandahar et Act of Dishonor, ainsi que pour ses documentaires pour la radio tels que Of Paradise and Failure et Road to Damascus. 
In celebrating, there's also the need to learn about the many facets that each Canadian of Asian descent embodies. It is through sharing our experiences as well as the experiences of our ancestors that we better understand, respect, and appreciate one another. It is a way to preserve and pass on cultural knowledge from one generation to the next. At the heart of each account is a human being. This month, we spoke with many Canadians of Asian descent about the past and what we can learn from it. The hope is that these testimonials can inspire all of us to actively learn more about the great diversity of cultures within Asian communities across Canada. My parents and grandparents were community leaders and activists. I'm inspired by the commitment of our ancestors to achieve equal rights and thereby strengthen the foundations of Canada. We arrived by boat uh, uh, in Indonesia. We stayed at a refugee camp. We were interviewed by uh, Canadian immigration and then we were accepted. Uh, that was um, by the end of uh, 1979. And Canada happens to be an ideal place um, uh, as a refuge because uh, not only uh, are you safe, but you can really thrive in Canada. Dealing with differences, people resolve differences uh, peacefully and through uh, discussion and dialogue. And that's, uh, that's uh, quite particular to, to Canada. Well, the Korean War to me is the very reason why I even exist because obviously we wouldn't have wanted such a war, but my parents survived the war and uh, it's because Canadians, Americans, the world went to Korea to um, intervene and protect the people of South Korea. So in any event, I'm here alive and well to be able to serve in the Senate. So I didn't realize that Canadians have these incredible stories uh, about their service in the Korean War, their sacrifice in the Korean War. I've met people literally across this country, the children, grandchildren of our Korean War veterans. Canadians in essence said, we will go, they volunteer to go. There are so many stories. I would love to just get rid of this forgotten war label. It would be so wonderful for Canadians to understand our history, our sacrifice in Korea, just like they do for World Wars One and Two. Being able to talk about it and remember it. Okay, can you see him? Yay, there's great grandpa, I had it framed. Toronto Star, that's his 15 minutes of fame. Uh, June 22nd, uh, that actually was taken the day before. See, so he's holding the last spike. That's the ceremonial last spike that um, Pierre Burton gifted the Chinese community with. And we actually carried, my family carried that last spike uh, on the Redress Express to the um, uh, to, uh, to, to Ottawa. And uh, we uh, presented it uh, to, at that time to our Prime Minister, uh, the Honorable Stephen Harper, uh, for his apology to the Chinese community for the head tax. And my grandfather was, uh, there was only six living head tax payers on the actual uh, day of the apology, which is pretty sad because there was 80,000 uh, Chinese head tax payers. For the most famous and iconic picture in all of Canada, on uh, November 7, 1885, on the hammering of the last spike, to not have one Chinese face in that picture, you know, um, like we've got to reclaim that picture and do it right. There's so much um, history and uh, so much to be said and told about the, uh, about the Chinese immigration story, but the Chinese story in terms of the building of the railroad. Um, you know, that's the building of a nation. You know, that was the building of our country. Uh, in terms of uh, economically and politically, where would we be? Growing up as a mixed heritage person, in the short, short answer, my Asian heritage gives me a step up from the ground. Indigenous people are on the ground. If you have a Chinese name, you, you, you're, you're acceptable, more acceptable than being an Indigenous person. And, uh, but it opened doors, but it still had its own restrictions. My grandfather used to say that uh, one day you can be rich, the next day uh, you can be poor. 
Well, somebody can take away your money, somebody can take away your property, but one thing nobody can take away from you, that's your education. You must educate yourself, you must edu give education to your children, so if they know the history, then history will never repeat it again. We can't undo the past, but uh, we can move forward. For me, the memorials have been significant. I remember visiting one in Brampton with my parents, and we had this very rich discussion about my great-grandfather and my grandmothers in India who had to fight the British um, and the suffering that they went through as a result. But how these stories are connected, how what was happening in India and globally with the movement of the Indian diaspora in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Japan, and what was happening in Canada was just as relevant to that global context. And also the other things that were happening in 1914. Uh, there was the forced removal of indigenous children to Indian residential schools. Uh, so what would it be like to have storyboards about the Komagadamaru with a storyboard about the, com uh, the residential schools together with the forced internment of Japanese families during the Second World War? What would it be like to tell those stories together? And the, the incident of the Komagata Maru and the history attached to it is uh, still quite relevant to South Asian Canadians and to all Canadians, I suppose, because that moment really marked a, a change in how migrants viewed Canada and how they viewed their position within Canada. I think in those days there was a lot of solidarity. The 1907 riots were in Japantown and Chinatown and where Sikhs lived and Punjabis lived in Kitsilano. And those communities rallied at that time in 1907. And I think the time has come for us to all rally behind each other and say, you know, hate against anyone is a hate against me. So if we can learn from, our, from those solidarities and bring them forward, I think we're in a better position. La pandémie de COVID-19 a engendré une augmentation de la xénophobie et du racisme anti-asiatique au Canada. C'est ce qui a fait rejaillir d'anciens stéréotypes, dont le péril jaune, la taxe d'entrée imposée aux immigrants chinois, la loi sur l'exclusion des Chinois, le Komagata Maru et l'internement des Japonais canadiens. Le gouvernement du Canada s'efforce d'accroître la sensibilisation, le soutien et les changements de politique afin d'éradiquer ce problème. Throughout the pandemic, we've seen a disturbing rise in deplorable racist behaviors against people of Asian descent. Racism continues to exist in our country, and we cannot fight it alone. You know, when I, I, I made another assumption that uh, given the pandemic and that we're all confined to, to our homes, uh, that probably not much would happen uh, with this year's uh, Asian Heritage Month. When I reconnected with my community colleagues uh, from, you know, the, the different communities, uh, I actually found that other people just like me, we never stopped. We just never stopped. It's also a pretty crucial time um, to support our community. So, um, you know, our team at CASA is really, really resilient and has, um, you know, come through a lot of uh, barriers to working remotely and trying to do their best uh, to support the communities that we serve. Even before the pandemic was declared and even before uh, coronavirus was given the name COVID-19, in Toronto, we already started to see um, a, you know, anti-Asian uh, racism sentiment. Uh, and because of the experience we had back in SARS uh, 2003, we knew that there was going to be a rise of anti-Asian racism. Uh, so myself and uh, a number of other concerned community members, we hosted a press conference right away at City Hall. Uh, and I recall, you know, myself talking about uh, you know, not only to fight against the virus of coronavirus, but also against the virus of racism. When we see that um, uh, other members of the community uh, under attack, uh, the community feel that pain and the community um, empathize, right? With the family, with those loved ones of the, the people impacted. Uh, and they also become concerned about their own sense of um, uh, safety and security, about their own sense of belonging in Canada. I was just thinking that many of you would have seen the recent Bloomberg article that, um, that said that Vancouver is the anti-Asian racism 
hate crime capital of North America. I really do think this press now that's kind of highlighted it has it has really caused a lot of conversations that were not happening before. Like even my mother, who's 86, is saying, you know, you know, I think it's time. I think we need to speak up. Notre slogan était toujours. Si vous voyez quelque chose, faites quelque chose. De ne pas être silencieux, de ne pas rester inactif et ne pas avoir peur de dénoncer ou rapporter des incidents, des désinformations et des discriminations aux autorités concernées. So we have to help people understand the relationship between prejudice to stereotyping to discrimination to racism to systemic racism and then we also have to provide tools to to the community in a way that is community appropriate and user friendly understanding the link between what we're seeing now the so-called yellow peril in our history uh, is really a parallel to what we're seeing during the covid uh, era where chinese and other asians are considered uh, you know, um, dirty, we're bringing diseases to Canada. All of these things have a historical root. With a stronger understanding of our history, then we will have um, a better chance of reconciliation. Uh, and with, rec and, you know, at the same time, I think our community is extremely resilient. Despite all the racism that we have experienced in this country, we are still here. And, um, and trying our best to, to, to strive, not just survive. I was really disturbed, again, like, since the start of the pandemic, to see the content that was being shared on things like WhatsApp and on social media about um, Chinese communities. And within our own, like my own um, networks and my own circles, like I'm very clear, like if you're, if you don't like being discriminated against, like me being a visibly Muslim woman, um, I face Islamophobia, I see, um, you know, uh, incidents of Islamophobia a lot. I see content that's Islamophobic. So if I'm kind of the victim of that, uh, then I should empathize with people that are facing anti-Asian racism right now. Dans toutes nos interventions, euh, il y a un message constant et courant. C'est la solidarité et l'unité dans nos différences, avec nos différences. On conjugue nos différences afin de produire, entre autres, une mission commune qu'on appelle pour le bien collectif. Ce qui est important, ce sont les valeurs et les principes fondamentaux qui devraient nous guider pour construire une société équitable, une société qui valorise réellement la différence ou les différences, et ultimement une société qui peut être beaucoup plus forte grâce à ces différences. Long journeys, wild experiences, different stories, stories that will make history, histories that built this country, country that did not see me, even when I fought at its forefront army, serving, protecting, showing my loyalty, stood my guard for thee. To be a citizen of a land stolen by white men from those they called Indian. Oh, were they surprised when Mr. Singh's ship, the Kumagatu Maru, arrived. The histories of my grandparents, the ones you may forget, but their blood is embedded within me, running through my veins just like their history within this country, running down the railroads, the routes they made for your ease, from west all the way to the east. The histories of fishermen teaching you the ways of the sea. These are the ones who left all they've had behind, crossing mountains and oceans for the sake of opportunity and safety for the future of their children, just like you and me. Trying to prove they are worthy, yet Canada did not see. You see, you may mock my small eyes, but my world is big, so big it accepted your bigotry, worked the jobs you did not want and helped your economy. You claimed I was stealing opportunity, yet I shared my knowledge, my culture and my food while paying taxes like any other citizen would. You love the ray of colors on my Afghan dress, so you made it your own and walked the fashion shows. You love the spices of our food tingling your tongue, yet I was too ashamed to bring it to school. 
You see, I and like me are the opportunity for this country. Your aircraft danced around and above my land, pocket full of bombs, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. I am more than what you see, I am the history. This country would be so bland if I and like me had no resilience. The hate you give today is nothing new because let's face it, there are more people that look like me than you. We pride ourselves in our perseverance. This country is the planted seed of my people and their history. We've grown thick skin to the punches you've thrown, some strong, brown, and dark like a trunk of a tree, some yellow and bright like the sun. We are the sun that never sets on a land that prefers rain. Some wear white and blue capes, work in the front lines to save your lives, even after being blamed for a virus that knows no race. But you see, we all bleed the same color under this. I want to thank the indigenous blood of this land, the ones who gave me a home even when they had none of their own. We are the Canada the world sees. Despite all the hardship beneath the policies, we rise. We rise because we are more than what meets the eyes. We are the history today and the future of this country. Sajida Zaki is an advocate for immigrants and refugees. She sits on the board of directors at Fresh Voices Initiative. Thank you, Sajida, for your words and your commitment to your art and your work. La ministre Mary Ying a immigré de Hong Kong au Canada avec sa famille et a grandi en apprenant le combat que doivent livrer de nombreux immigrants avant de trouver le succès en sol canadien. La ministre Ying est une leader communautaire dévouée qui a toujours cru au pouvoir de la fonction publique. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that I am on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa and the Wendat peoples. For those of us who are settlers or even immigrants to Canada, it's important to recognize that Indigenous peoples have always been here and that we all have a role to play in reconciliation moving forward. I would also like to thank my good friend, Minister Bardish Chager, for inviting me to share a few words during Asian Heritage Month. Today, Canadians of Asian descent contribute to our communities in incredible ways, whether it is employing thousands in their small businesses or serving as teachers, caregivers, and essential workers or the leaders in their community and the professionals that we see as our friends and our neighbors across the country. My own family and I immigrated to Canada when I was seven. And growing up, I worked in their small business, which was a restaurant. And every day throughout this year, I've thought about how this pandemic and the unacceptable increase in anti-Asian racism across the, this country would have, accept, would have affected our own family and our business back then. So what we need to do is to stand together as all Canadians with allies. And our government, of course, is committed to taking actions against racism and discrimination in all of its form, whether online, on our streets, in our homes, and in the workplace. This is why our government is investing $11 million over the next two years into the Canada Race Relations Foundation to support all racialized communities impacted by the rise of racism during COVID-19 including establishing a national coalition to support Asian Canadian communities. Racism and intolerance go directly against our country's greatest strength. Our diversity is what makes our community strong and our businesses successful here at home and abroad. And I want to make sure that Asian Canadians are present in every room where decisions are made by including them. Decisions that include the rebuilding from this pandemic to the future of our country and solving some of the greatest global challenges like environment and climate change. With this, I wish you a happy Asian Heritage Month and I'm counting on you to stand together with us so that we can build the kind of country that is both diverse and inclusive here and into the future. Thank you so very much. Merci beaucoup. What?
This month truly really is special to me because it gives me a time to be able to see people who look just like me being unified and strong members of Canadian society. For me, Asian Heritage Month is an opportunity for us to acknowledge and remember the people that came from other places to create the opportunities and community that we have today. To me, recognition means the acknowledgement of the contributions that Asians have made throughout history and continue to make moving forward. It means visibility. It means to no longer have your lived experience and contribution be made invisible. It's having your voice heard and celebrated rather than muted. The person who inspires me the most is my mother. She's a professor in Vietnamese linguistic and culture. Family. Who is this? Um, aunt, grandpa and grandma. I know one of the things that keeps me going is finding joy in community, finding joy in solidarity, finding small pockets of joy in art and food and laughter, and holding on to that as tightly as I can. As a Syrian Canadian, the Asian Heritage Month is about celebrating cultures and being a part of the very diverse fabric of Canada. It's a moment to celebrate, to uh, be reunited and to be able to reunite with our heritage, with our nos traditions. My name is Komo Sanda, and Asian Heritage Month means to me learning about the many achievements and contributions of our Asian communities. It's about shining the spotlight on our trailblazers in the Asian Canadian community for being such important role models for our youth. Thank you for laying out the foundation. Thank you for helping uh, build this beautiful country. A lot of us are grieving and are feeling tremendous amount of pain and fear. Now is the time for us to reflect on how resilient and determined we were in the past and are today. And if I were to assign one word to Asian Heritage Month, it would be the word empowerment. A chance to showcase, reflect and appreciate on the contributions made by Asian Canadians for the progression and prosperity of Canada. No matter the adversity or how uncertain the future outcome is, that we keep our spirits high to persevere and to find solutions to tackle those challenges that are holding us down. If I were to think about one phrase that describes Asian Heritage Month, it would be access to justice. For far too long, Asian Canadians have been treated as second-class citizens. Having experienced a hate crime myself, I realize that it's very difficult and challenging to even access basic police services to get help. When there are stereotypes or not stereotypes, it reinforces the perception of how a community X, Y, or Z will be perceived by people. That's why the importance for me to break the stereotypes. You see, Asians have been stereotyped as submissive and quiet, but don't mistake our silence for compliance. Silence is bold. I think it's time for us to speak up, to tell our stories, our struggles, and our successes. We need to be loud. It's important because we are living together, and it would be great that we know each other better and live um, together happily. We're all human, we all share the same energy, we're all intelligent. It's about love, prosperity, justice, and equal opportunity for all communities d'être fier de qui on est, de prendre un moment et d'être fier parce que personne ne va le faire pour nous. Donc, euh, peace and love. The Honorable Dr. Vivian Poi is an author, historian, fashion designer, entrepreneur, and community volunteer. In 1998, she was the first Canadian of Asian descent to be appointed to the Senate of Canada, where she focused on gender issues, multiculturalism, immigration, and human rights. Dr. Poi was also instrumental in having May recognized as Asian Heritage Month across Canada. For centuries, Asians have helped to build this country despite institutional racism and life was harsh. It wasn't until after World War II that conditions improved and Canadian citizenship was available to all who qualified. This is a time to celebrate the achievements of Asian Canadians, past and present, and we look to the future for equality for all. This month is the perfect time for all Canadians to interact with those of us of Asian heritage, to learn from each other, share our foods, laugh together, and make friends. Despite the fact that many people think Asia only means 
East, Southeast, and South Asia, they tend to forget Central and West Asia. It encompasses almost all of Turkey and a very sizable part of Russia. Asia is the largest continent in the world and it is where most of us are from. We have also seen a rise of anti-Asian racism in the past year. Unfortunately, racism against Asian is systemic in Canada and COVID is just another excuse for some to show hate towards others. Hate not only destroys people, it also destroys countries. Asians have been in Canada for hundreds of years, and yet some in Canadian society still consider us as foreign, despite many have been here for generations. As long as we're considered foreign, we can be told to go home. Today, we're going to reflect how far we have come and how far we still need to go to be completely accepted in Canada. Now, I turn to my celebrated panelists. I extend my warmest welcome to Maitreyi, Payam, Como, Cassie, Leonard, Jean, and Bartaj. Thank you all for taking the time to join me at this round table. Now, my question is, please close your eyes and tell me what you think Canadians look like. I think Canadians look like what this panel looked like before I closed my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What about Maitreyi? I don't think I need to close my eyes to know that I think Canadians look like anyone who really says Canada's their home, right? Is where they feel safe, where they have their family, right? So yeah, like Leonard said, definitely like looks like us and more. I found this question really hard because I don't have, I don't picture one person. Like I, I look at, for instance, my son's class, you know, the kids in his class, there's, there's, there's such a mix. Thank you very much, because I know I have come across certain people who think you have to be white to be Canadian. That is why the question. Well, Vivian, I would say um, the, the, the face of uh, the Canadian is the face of humankind. We are a society which is indigenous and immigrant, Anglophone and Francophone. We're black and white. We wear hijabs and uh, kippahs. And perhaps that is why uh, the Canadian identity is so important in a world that is being ripped apart by war and violence. Uh, and we, tank, we can't take for granted the importance of the success of our model of a multiculturalism society, which is founded on a transcendent um, human identity. Thank you. I, I know from my own experience, when I travel especially, people always pick me out as Canadian, which I find very interesting. And I think it is the way we behave more so the way we treat others more so than the way we look this is the what my understanding is now recently because of the anti-asian racism a number of people have been told to go home so where is home for me i was born and raised in mississauga and i still live here so it's definitely my home but it sucks when you're told like you know why don't you like go back to where you came from then? And it's like, I was born in the same hospital as you, man. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> and that hurts as much as like, you know, like we all laugh about it. And I'm sure like um, you guys have, might've heard it's a similar kind of sentiment too. We all laugh about it. Cause you know, it is like, you got, what can you do? I was just going to say, like, I, I, uh, been told to go home to China. I was like, I've never been to China and I want to go. Could you like, if you're going to pay for the flight, I will go home. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of almost more the idea of home, like, and the idea of it's family. Home is where your family is, right? Home is where you, where you can always go back to. And for me, it's, it's also the place where you have a huge responsibility, um, to, to keep 
it safe, to keep it loving. Yeah, yeah. Can I build on what Jean just said? I, I think part of both acknowledging my home is Canada. I also want to make sure that folks understood that I, I didn't consider Canada my home always. When I first arrived here, it was a very strange place. And when I first mm -hmm. experienced my first racial slur, I felt like a stranger. Home is not something that happens automatically. It's earned and it needs, we all need to contribute towards that because we harm people every day in this country with our words, with our actions, with our behaviors. Um, and these are Canadian citizens. <laughs> well, I came to uh, Toronto from Iran at age nine. And when the children in the schoolyard would say, go home, I had a difficult time explaining to them that I wish I could go home, but our family left because of persecution. I can't go home. Uh, but that taught me a very powerful lesson at an early age that um, uh, home is an emotional space that we confuse with a physical place. Uh, belonging, where do we feel that we belong? And throughout history, we've defined ourselves based on ties of blood and soil. And it takes very little imagination to define yourself that way. But to define yourself based on transcendent ideals, that takes a lot of effort. For me, home is, is wherever I am, um, but includes Canada, includes that insult home in India. And I think that's also a beautiful thing about being Canadian is that it's this duality of identity. And that we don't have to leave where we came from and the heritage and culture that we come from in order to be deemed Canadian. The other thing I'll share is I'm in Ottawa. This is my home, but it's also the unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. So it's a complicated question of what is home. We're reckoning what these, with what these things mean and that it's okay that it's a constant thing that's in process and that it, home means a different thing to every person. Thank you very much. Now, I've come to the, the last question. What are your negative or positive anecdotal experiences as an Asian Canadian? You can just tell me negative, positive, oh or either. Something, <laughs> something interesting and special. Like the negative stuff, it's never been everything like super, super bad. It's just like a lot of little microaggressions that kind of just build up over time, you know, like, and like over time that gets to you, right? It's just like, an, it's, you know, like the way water just erodes things. Like it just kind of erodes who you are. But then like on the other hand, you see like people trying and there's certainly in Canada there, that's part of the Canadian spirit. I think it's built into the country is that we're supposed to be accepting of all these things. And not everybody is, but we're supposed to. Asian racism is so subtle in a way that like anti-black racism is not. And you, you're, you're, you learn about racism through racism against black people. And you're like, okay, well, that's not happening to me. So I think that I lived a lot of my childhood and my early twenties really thinking like, I guess I'm a young Asian woman and I'm reasonably attractive. And so it doesn't affect me. And I think actually a lot of people, Asians really live their lives thinking that way, especially Asians who get to be in a place of privilege, who are reasonably well assimilated into Canadian culture. I have a lot of friends who just think like racism is a thing, but I'm lucky it doesn't really happen to me. And it's so hard to really see it. It's so hard because if it really was that they're like, your eyes are a different shape and that's why we don't like you, it's so much easier to reckon with that, I think. But when it's layered so complexly and nobody really knows why it doesn't fit, it's too bad because you are the other one. So it's your job to go figure out all those levels of complexity. Whereas the other ones, they can feel the tension too, but they're not being harmed by it. And so they don't have to spend their time thinking about it. When I first arrived at the, at the, at the detachment, my staff sergeant, who is a commander of the detachment, my staff sergeant, didn't want anything to do with me. He didn't want to talk to me. He thought that what I did was completely wrong. He just absolutely dismissed me. Uh, you know, uh, didn't care for the turban, thought the RCMP had made an incredible, you know, had done an incredible wrong. Two years later, just before he retires, we're in a car together and he looks over and he says to me, he says, Baltej, you know, you're like a son to me. <laughs> and, I, and I laughed. <laughs> I said, Bob, you remember what you said to me two years ago? <laughs> you know. And so that's why I say when we started earlier that it's less about 
what we look like and more about how we relate to each other and how we experience each other. There's so many small memories that come up because, again, it's like there are moments of overt racism that I've had, you know, being in a movie theater in Grand Prix, Alberta with my little cousins and having someone in the back of the theater shout white power and then being like 16 and not knowing what to do. Um, and then it was people leaving not the room. So I was like, OK, we're safe. But like you're 16 um, or like thinking about my dad and when he moved to Canada again to northern Alberta and choosing to cut his hair, we're sick or, you know, that's a big part of our faith. And so cutting his hair and, and maintaining short hair for majority of his life um, and seeing the racism that happens for sick people in Canada who do choose to keep their hair long, who do wear turbans. But to s- a really positive example for me would be my wedding to my husband. So I married a very white, big lumberjack looking man. Um, but our wedding got to be this amalgamation, this beautiful coming together for our families. It was this perfect example of empathy, of care, of compassion, of celebration, of two very distinct cultures coming together um, and finding a way forward together. And I want to add, it is a real privilege for me to meet all of you. Thank you. you. (laughs) I'm going to take a quick screenshot. Does everyone want to smile? And then I'll send this to whoever I'm supposed to send this to. (laughs) One, (laughs) two, three. (laughs) Don't let them treat you that way. It's not what you think it is. Don't worry. That's not That's not me. He's just being up. Stand up to yourself. Don't worry about it. This is not something. You gotta do something. That's not right. I'm not too saying that. Don't play don't say shit now. Bonjour, je m'appelle Zodzea. Je suis heureuse de vous saluer au nom de Mongol qui habite à Montréal. Je suis directrice de l'Association Mongolie Canada. Notre association organise de nombreuses activités afin de faire connaître la Mongolie et la culture mongole au Canada. I came to Canada 40 years ago. And in 40 years, I've seen a lot. A lot of racism, a lot of struggle, within my community and other communities. But we in the Malaysian community are proud to work with our fellow Canadians and other communities to make Canada a strong and resilient place where we can work together to make this a prosperous and generous country for all. C'est important de continuer de parler contre le racisme, de dénoncer ceux qui propagent de la haine, d'éduquer les gens sur la richesse des cultures asiatiques Et c'est important aussi de promouvoir le vivre ensemble. I think it's really important for us to remember histories of migration over the centuries and the important contributions made uh, to Canada by Canadians of Asian origin right from the late 19th century onwards till today even as we recognize that we are not the original inhabitants of these lands, Turtle Islands, and even as we register our appreciation for the welcome that we have got from Indigenous people and work to resolve issues of colonialism and racism. Friends, I want to wish you all a very happy Asian Heritage Month. But this year and this month, we need to go beyond just celebrating Asian history, culture, and heritage. We need to take a stand against anti-Asian hate. The thing is, Canada is a special country, one of the most beautiful places in the world because so many people around the world decided to make Canada their home. We are better off, we are stronger, we are more diverse because people made that decision. But the reality is, with the rise of anti-Asian hate and racism, those very same people don't feel like they belong. So we need to take a stand. This month, let's not only celebrate Asian heritage, but make sure we send a message that hate 
against Asians is not welcome. We will give it no space, no air to breathe. We will take a stand that together, let's build a country where everyone is celebrated and everyone belongs. We've known that there's been systemic discrimination against Asian peoples for a very long time. But why the sudden increase? Well, I think it has to do with a number of false narratives that have emerged in our society and which have been weaponized by racists. And even if those false narratives fade over time, there will be another false narrative that will come up before you know it. And again, at that time, we have to counter, uh, we have to repel those half-truths and lies. Because if we don't repel the false narratives, the false narratives will repel us. Au cours des derniers mois, j'étais profondément encouragé et inspiré de voir les milliers de personnes qui dans tous les pays sont descendues dans les rues pour dénoncer le racisme et la discrimination anti-asiatique sous toutes leurs formes. Cette mobilisation contre tout gène de racisme au pays nous rappelle que si nous faisons preuve de compassion et d'empathie envers chacun, nous pouvons mettre en terme à toutes les manifestations du racisme et nous y parviendrons. Asian Canadians who embody the best of both worlds can be as strong as two people. My parents left South Korea with hopes for their children to fulfill their own destinies. During this Asian Heritage Month, with sincere gratitude and love, I honor them and the pioneers of our great nation on whose shoulders we stand today. Canada is stronger and better because of them and because of all of us. Together, let us celebrate Asian Heritage Month Ensemble, nous célébrons le patrimoine asiatique. As we know, the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has sparked a significant surge in anti-Asian racism. This recent act of hate must be condemned by all Canadians. We all need to amplify our outreach and resolve to stand together against anti-Asian racism. There's no tolerance for any form of discrimination in our country. Diversity is one of our nation's greatest strength. And I call on all citizens to uphold our values and put an end to this disturbing trend. Let us continue to be recognized for our inclusivity, acceptance and compassion. Thank you, Maxi Buku Xie I'd like to wish everyone a very happy Asian Heritage Month, a time for all Canadians to learn and celebrate the many achievements and contributions of Canadians of Asian descent who throughout our history have done so much to strengthen our country. We are not free until we are all free. Let's roll up our sleeves and truly get to work. Our country, we know, will be better tomorrow for what we can start doing today. Hello everyone, my name is Gurdeep Pander. I live in the Yukon, more specifically close to Lake Labarch in the Yukon. I love dancing, performing or teaching Pangra dance. Uh, if you don't know what Pangra dance is, Pangra is a dance form. It was originated in Punjab region. Farmers, basically, Punjabi or Sikh farmers, they had created these, these dance moves out of farming activities just to fill their days with joy, hope, and positivity. And uh, to be thankful to the land for providing. I've been dancing Pangra for a long time. Uh, I made so many videos in beautiful Yukon settings. I did many cross-cultural collaborations. Uh, and um, now through my videos during the pandemic, I also love spreading the same message of optimism across the nation. Now I would like to show you 
my move uh, so that you could dance along. So there's a little instruction. You raise your left leg up like this, like this, and tap your toe on the floor. Up and tap. So one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Beautiful. So when you are tapping with your left foot, on your right foot, you will be hopping. Hopping will look like this. One, two, one, two, and one, two. So same thing we will do on other side, right side. If I turn, you raise your right leg up and tap your toe on the floor. On your left, you will be hopping. Same technique like three, four, three, four, and three, four. So you have learned your left side and also your right side. When we combine, it will look like one, two, switch, three, four, switch, one, two, three, four. Now we will learn the upper body part. I mean the arms. Arm part is easy. You bring your arms up, straight up. So when you say number one, you just bring them down. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If your leg is up, your arms are up too. If your leg is down, your arms are down too. Same the other side. If leg is up, arms up, leg down, arms down, which means that your arms and your leg, they are both parallel to each other. Before we combine our legs, arms together, another important factor in Pangra is your smile, your happiness. So when you dance Pangra, make sure that you are happy. Uh, make sure that you are smiling. Smiling from your core, from your heart, and reflect that smile through your whole body. Now we will combine everything together, lower body, upper body, and our happiness. Okay, folks, be ready. Let's start. Five, six, seven, eight. Start. One, two, three, four. One. Gurdeep Pandar, your positivity is absolutely infectious. Thank you for bringing a smile to my face. Afin de conclure cette présentation virtuelle, nous remercions tous les travailleurs de première ligne pour leur engagement à prendre soin de nos nombreuses communautés partout à travers le pays, à chaque jour. Vos compétences et votre dévouement sont essentiels. This month, speaking with so many Canadians of Asian descent across Canada, there was an outpouring of gratitude and deep recognition to all the frontline workers whose strength, dedication and support are truly inspiring. Thank Merci. you. Merci d'appliquer les mesures de santé publique pour vous protéger et protéger les autres de la COVID-19. I'd also like to thank everyone who's taken the time to get their first shot of the vaccine. And if you haven't gotten vaccinated yet, uh, definitely consider getting vaccinated sooner than rather than later so that we can get back to a life more ordinary. Thank you, stay safe, and get vaccinated. Thank you all for your hard work and dedication. Stay safe and get vaccinated. I am grateful for all of the staff at Region of Waterloo Public Health and at all public health agencies across Canada. I am grateful for our many community partners, healthcare partners, and essential workers who are working hard every day to fight the pandemic, care for us, and support our communities. We, we owe it to our essential workers of Asian descent uh, to understand the unique experience they, they actually they endure. The farm workers, the migrant workers, the grocery store workers, many of whom don't even have uh, you know full status in Canada, Les gens qui travaillent dans les, les supermarchés, les, les policiers, les ambulanciers, toutes ces personnes dont la présence 
a été très, très réconfortant. People who are working at airports, that are working in restaurants, that are working in um, the postal offices, taxi drivers, truck drivers. This guy here, he's a Vancouver firefighter. And we just want to say thank you to, to you guys for everything that you've done. Thank you all for your service. I would like to say that during this Asian Heritage Month, please take some moments to learn about Asian people. The concept of Asian is so vast, right? So there's um, there are so many different identities within that group. If we are going to fight anti-Asian hate, we have to fight the falsehoods. Mm -hmm. Is that you? Is that rogue? Mm -hmm. oh.